Are you serious? So this is How To Kill An Hour. I am Marcus Bronzy and this is the final of our E3 specials and I'm glad to be joined by uh, a guy who I've got to know very well over the last few days, over a few beverages, seen him nipping in and out of different booths in uh, E3. Please introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Tom Regan, the gaming editor for Fandom. Yeah, and what is Fandom? That's a complicated question. So uh, you might know us from Wiki. So if you ever want to know who that guy is in Game of Thrones or what to do with that dragon on Elder Scrolls, we run Wikia, which is like the uh, the fan version of Wikipedia for nerdy culture. And Fandom is our editorial arm. We do reviews and interviews and stuff like that. Cool, and we'll put a link in the show description, but should a listener want to go and have a look at Fandom, how do they find it? On fandom.com. <laughs> Simples. Uh, and on the socials, all the same as well, isn't it? At, fandom. At get fandom. At get fandom. Some guy got there first for the at fandom. Damn, I bet they don't even tweet either. I bet they don't. No. <laughs> uh, so let's set the scene right now. So we are actually on a sunny rooftop bar in the middle of LA. We are away from the madness of the conference hall, which is massively appreciated right now. And we are having a beer and going to talk about some video games. Yes, it's an absolute scorcher today as well. It is like LA is consistent, but this is super hot for LA. So there's no better place than, like you said, getting up on a rooftop. We can see E3, it's just over the road from us. Uh, can we say where we are right now? Is that cool? Yeah, yeah, so we're uh, Good Shepherd. So uh, Good Shepherd is a publisher who does lots of indie games and they've hired a bar above Hooters because why not? <laughs> <laughs> and that's opposite the convention center, so. Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you? Should we talk about some of their titles yet? So I've only played one okay. called Semblance, which is a, uh, it's called a Play-Doh platformer. That's what they, kind of label it as and what's cool about it is it started life as a bug so a programmer accidentally left the bug in a game where you could keep jumping into the environment and it would just move so if you have a a 2d game if you have a 2d plane and you just keep hammering into it with your head it kind of makes a dent and that became the core mechanic (laughs) and it's really fun so you just have to dent up the world so you can bounce off it and jump around so that's pretty cool awesome awesome right back to the show uh, there are some things that I discussed with Midas. You know Midas, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I do. Good guy. Had a little chat with him about a few things. And in the last podcast, we discussed the potential of Spider-Man. So let's kick it off there. We said, Tom, that Spider-Man could be amazing if they got the right Spider-Man feel, if the fighting was on point fluid but fun, and if it had the character in it. Now, what was your take on Spider-Man? I've, I've had a go this morning. How was it for you? So based on those three criteria you said, it smashes it. It ticks all of those boxes with a huge red pen. Like, it it feels so good to play. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I was just grinning from ear to ear when I was playing it. Yeah, man. And, and what's cool about the demo is they throw you straight into the open world. And everybody has a different experience because there's so much stuff going on. So what happened when you played the demo? So as you said, like, I was... When when it's a PlayStation conference, they showed a really story-driven, kind of dark cinematic bit, and to be thrown straight in that web slinging was great. So I spent about 15 minutes just swinging around. (laughs) And then um, I was listening to a police radio, solved a couple of crimes, Um, then I beat on some goons, and then I was asked to fix some leaks, which was maybe less exciting, but still made me swing around. So you've done the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man part of it, (laughs) Yeah, that's me, that's me. Just helping people out, you know. Uh, so, because we're moving real quick right now, massive thumbs up. Would you say that's one of the big, bigger titles this year? Yeah, I mean, I think the key thing you got now, the Spider-Man game, is the web slinging, and they absolutely killed it. Like yeah. the sense of flow you have is amazing. Like if you misjudge your swing, instead of going straight slamming into a uh, skyscraper, you run straight up it, constantly moving. It just feels great. You can turn on the dime. You just feel like you've got the real Spider-Man type acrobatics that that mean that you can go anywhere in a city. I don't feel, it didn't feel restrictive at all, did it? No, not at all. With that Spider-Man, big thumbs up from us. Uh, next thing is a production that Team 17 are publishing, the guys behind Worms, an absolute classic game. Uh, they had a game called Overcooked, which we really loved here at How To Kill An Hour. How were you uh, feeling about the, rich, the first Overcooked? I love it. It's one of those games which is just beautifully designed. You have about three buttons and the premise sounds terrible, right? The whole point of video games is to escape and do these crazy things. But this is a game where you team up with your mates, you do the washing up and you cook food. <laughs> <laughs> but despite people probably going, oh no, it's so good. You'll start off, you have a couple of beers with your mates and you'll be friendly and then you'll be screaming at each other for seconds. you soon find out who the head chef is and who the sous chef is. <laughs> yeah. So that was a really good game. And now we've got Overcooked 2. 
there's a couple of things that we wanted from the game the first time around with regards to multiplayer and they promised to deliver, deliver these uh, one of them being online right yep awesome that's great but they've also got new levels how do you find those great so they've added a few subtle things that might not mean a lot if you haven't played it but small things like now you can because it's online mode you have emotes you can say like cook in order up which is quite handy and also you can chuck ingredients which is great because the levels get really crazy and overcooked things start moving one person's flying one person's on the stairs so you can just chuck carrots at people and just keep things going it's great would you say it's the sort of game that you'd like to play with your mates still or is that something you think you'd be hopping online and playing as well with randoms uh, so much better with, with me mates in front of you and what I love about it is people who consistently tell me they don't like video games will come down and play over here to have a great time yeah it's a great one man right on to the next one Resident Evil 2 I uh, just want to say massive thank you to Capcom for making me poo my pants <laughs> with their zombie like experience over here can we just explain what this Resident Evil 2 is should in case somebody not be a fan of the franchise or they're you know young yeah so Confession, I never played Resident Evil 2 originally, but um, this game, this remake has been anticipated for a long time. It was announced 2015, it's been a no-show repeatedly, and we kind of thought it would be like the first Resident Evil remake, which uh, they released a few years ago, and it was very much an HD up-res of the original. This time, no. Fully from the ground up in the Resi 7 engine, looks incredible, it's like a reimagining rather than a remaster. Yeah. And I felt they really had a creepy feel to it that draws you in and the soundscape in it is amazing I had a pair of headphones on and not only was it the soundscape that was creeping me out with little creaks and stuff I feel like they've coded in visual cues yeah normally you know I'm quite keen to kind of rush in and just see what happens I was constantly my flashlight on my gun leaning around corners creeping like the atmosphere was so good I genuinely felt tense the entire time awesome Resident Evil right next one uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. What did we miss? Oh yes! So that's Resident Evil. Right, so next, Bandai Namco. Uh, these are the guys that are behind many franchises, including Power Rangers, one of my favourite TV shows ever, 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 ever. Uh, you got to go and check out their stand as well, didn't you? Yep. How was that? It was cool. So um, Jump Force was kind of a pretty sweet announcement during the conference. It's uh, For those who didn't see it, Jump Force is referring to Shonen Jump, who is the manga label that publishes Dragon Ball, Naruto, One Piece, all the big names. And this is kind of a 3D brawler where it puts all of those characters in the real world and has them just beat the crap out of each other. Yeah, and um, in terms of that 3D brawler, it's kind of, I feel like it's crossing the line of the original style of, of um, Street Fighter style of beat em up and it's kind of taken it to a whole new level like the third dimension you really feel in this game yeah definitely um, it's kind of similar to another game I'm sure we're going to talk about Soul Calibur and yes. the fact that you're not just side on side you can move you can sidestep and you can actually run around the little environment which is cool for people that know the franchise Soul Calibur is Bandai Namco's probably second biggest fighter behind uh, Tekken but what is cool about it is it's set in a medieval fantasy, you've got these big ass weapons and it's just got a really unique tone to it. One thing I didn't like was the new reversal edge system, the kind of the rock, paper, scissors thing, when if you trigger this attack, there's a bit of a random element. One of you's got to do a block, one of you's got to do this, and you're not sure who's going to win, but aside from that, it looks stunning. Yeah. And they've also got a character in there from The Witcher, I believe. Yeah, yeah, Gerald. That was, that was a nice little crossover, because before they've had Yoda in there, they've had Link, they've had Darth Vader, Ezio even from Assassin's Creed but Geralt was a nice one That was yeah. he fits the medieval tone really well pretty good character as well I whooped some arse with him it's pretty good anything else that you'd like to give an honourable mention to? not really no <laughs> <laughs> right so Tom I put this question to Midas and I'm going to tell you uh, that he's actually changed his mind with regards to his answer today and I'll explain why in a moment I said this to him, I also gave this to Dransfield as well, Ian Dransfield. If you were going to leave E3 with one game and all the other games in the universe disappeared, which title would that be? And it can only be a game that you've seen over the last few days. What would you take home? I knew that question was coming, but I'm still not prepared for it somehow. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's a really good E3 this year. Um, I think I am torn between Resident Evil 2 just because that just had me and I, I couldn't stop grinning 
and actually there's an indie game called Sable which I played today which was really unique uh, you might have seen the Microsoft conference in a blink and you'll miss it kind of appearance it's a entirely open world hand drawn game where you ride about on this bike it's kind of like Shadow of the Colossus meets Journey and it was just really cool so out of those two you've got to pick one mate oh. there's only one game left in the universe okay Resident Evil really yeah. awesome and uh I've got to say that Midas has changed his mind. He is uh, down with Cyberpunk 2077. So there's no gameplay yet, but this game's, I've got to mention it, it's exciting people very much, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I can't speak to anyone, bump into any journalist without them going, oh my God, have you seen Cyberpunk? And I'm very gutted I haven't seen it, but I let my colleague Jeremy take it. Jeremy, if you're listening, I hate you. But um, <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. Everyone's been gushing about it in a way I haven't heard people gush about video game for a long time. Long, long time. Uh, I've got to be honest, I'm still staying with Spider-Man after having a go with it today because I love Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, so that's been E3 2018. I've been Marcus Bronzy. I've been Tom Regan. Plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Oh, before we go, you got a bit of advice for anyone that might be going to E3 in the future? What's one key bit of advice? Because I know you've been here before, right? Yeah, yeah. so uh, I would say make sure you take advantage of the places outside the conference. Oh, and part two, leave gaps in your schedule. You go, yeah, I can get from place to place. Even if you leave an hour, that's going to be time we have a sandwich and you just you just collapse so make sure you don't completely pack your schedule and make sure you take advantage of booths like Good Shepherd we're in now and Devolver that are outside of the show just to let you chill out awesome. yeah massive thank you to Devolver as well uh, responsible for this lovely Modelo that I'm sipping on right now and this California sunshine cheers